Wednesday for us today, which is a, you know, middle of the week. Uh, our guys did a great job today. So, um, you know, in our preparation, you know, I was really pleased with, you know, back to back, you know, pretty, um, you know, pretty physical day. So, um, I'm not sure where to go, but I'll let you guys answer. Fire away. Coach, what's the hardest thing to simulate for the first game? Tackling. Because, look, you know, you, you probably, you know, the first thing is you want to get all of your guys to the first game, and, and you're trying to protect them as much as you can, but yet you've got you to gotta tackle, right? And so I think the, the, the ability to simulate tackling is probably the biggest thing. Um, and, and then, you know, f you know, full field special teams, you know, kickoff, kickoff return, you know, punt, punt return, infield spacing, you know, again, where, you know, guys got to get off blocks and, and make plays in space. So anytime the game gets out within 53 and a third, like it, it's easier to duplicate the game within a box. But when that thing gets, you know, put out 53 and a third and it's spread out in space, it changes the complexities and, you know, that's where it's harder to duplicate. And can you update us on uh, kickoff and also who will be holding on uh, PATs and field goals? Yeah, holder uh, will, be, um, will be Peyton. Um, he, he'll, he'll be our holder. And he's done a really good job. Um, in terms of PAT, uh, Damian Ramos will be our, our PAT uh, and field goal. You know, it's still pretty competitive. Uh, Nate Divert's done a really good job on kickoffs. Uh, as you know, Aaron Burrell has just been cleared. Um, he'll be uh, not available this weekend, but should be available next weekend. And he's got a, a real chance to, you know, compete for that job. But um, Peyton Todd, um, will be the holder. Uh, Damian Ramos will be our kicker. Um, as I mentioned, Blake and Peyton will, will, will both be punting um, in the game. Uh, Slade will be our uh, long snapper. Slade Roy will long snap. And uh, I like our battery. It's, it's, a, it's a really good unit. Hey, Coach, uh, what sort of led you to the decision of, you know, using Blake and Peyton as your, as your punters then, if that's the case? Well, we want to include um, the ability to move our punter this year. Um, you know, Jay, Jay was not somebody that felt comfortable uh, in a rugby uh, fashion. He wanted to be a down-the-line kicker. Um, but Blake is accomplished in that and feels comfortable in, in that kind of Aussie rugby uh, type environment. And there are, time, there are times that you want to be able to implement that, and, and he's, he's comfortable and, and accomplished with it, where Peyton Todd is much more of a down-the-line guy. Um, so it gives us two weapons uh, within our, our punt arsenal, and, and we want to be able to take advantage of that. And why did you guys want to sort of implement more of the Aussie style of punting? What does that give you? Um, it, it, it allows you uh, from a overload protection standpoint to make it a little bit easier to handle, I don't want to say different defenses uh, that you may see from a punt return unit. Sometimes they get junked up a little bit, and it's hard to identify some of the – you know, the, the, when, you, when you're able to just scoop and not block the backside and just run away from it, essentially, that's where it becomes useful. And secondly, you know, you can pin the ball into the outside third much easier and essentially kick it away from dangerous return men. Are you happy with the amount of tackling that you're able to do in August? Would you prefer more or is it just right? And do you have a number two quarterback? Who won, who's your number two? Um, is there enough tackling? Yeah. 
You know, I think if, if there's any more tackling, you probably put yourself at risk for injury. Uh, so I think we probably got it just about right. I think what you have to really be good at is simulation of tackling. And, and how do you get to that simulation through um, really good technical work? And, and I think that that's, that's what we're going to have to see. Um, I think we've, in, we've included a lot more, um, I think, in, in my opinion, uh, drill work that allows us to simulate that. We do have a second quarterback. It's, it's really going to be both of them, uh, AJ and Ricky combined give us the best option at the number two. So um, we think that they have different skill sets and, and we're gonna utilize um, the combination of both of them to give us the best number two situation. Coach, for a defense that's still kind of trying to establish itself, it's kind of hard to think of a tougher challenge than a Lincoln Riley offense. So can you kind of just describe what that system does to a defense, like how it challenges a defense? So the air raid offense is one that we've seen many times. It's um, precision. It is um, fundamentally, um, you know, based upon wanting to throw the football, but will um, attack you in the run game if you are over committing yourself to the pass. And so it's, it's really, it's, it's, its its roots are in Mike Leach's, you know, uh, offensive structure, and, and we've seen quite a bit of it. Each head coach has its own way of kind of tweaking it a little bit. Lincoln has his own flavors. Um, you know, they implement the tight end much more than any of the air raid offenses that we've gone against and do a really good job with the tight end on the field so they're not a four-wide receiver air raid, which gives them a better opportunity to include a run game and, and be good at the run game. Um, so what does it give us in terms of challenges? Um, you know, a really good play caller, somebody that's going to keep you off balance, reverses, trick plays. Um, he's going to be uh, non-traditional in many ways. This is not going to be, um, well, I would have, that's, that seems like a call I would have made. Uh, I think these will be uh, times where our guys have to be on their toes at all times. Coach, quick uh, injury update. Chris Hilton, uh, Miles Frazier, any updates on them? Frazier is uh, good to go. He's practiced all week. Chris is still in, in a progression, uh, and we're, you know, we're hopeful that we get him ready to play. Um, but he's making good progress. And I've also got a sort of big, big picture question about the complexion of your roster. You know, when you look back, think back to when you started, you know, since then, number of transfers that you've signed has sort of gone down year over year. The number of players you signed out of high school has gone up year over year. I'm wondering if that's intentional or is it more of a coincidence on your part and your staff? No, it's intentional. Everything that we do is, is with a purpose. Uh, so, you know, you'll continue to see us get to the point where you know, the culture and the standards of the program will be one where we want to be able to recruit the state of Louisiana as our base. Um, we want to be able to develop our players, retain our players, obviously build great relationships so they stay, and then, you know, watch them have success while they're here. Uh, and we want to do that through the developmental process in terms of developing players. And it's a lot harder to do that when they have one or two years remaining and they, they have um, – you know, uh, other habits that they built uh, somewhere else. So we want, we want that to be something that is um, part of what our, the fabric of our program is. That does not mean we won't take somebody from the transfer portal. Um, that doesn't mean we won't take a transfer. Um, but the culture, the standards, who we are as a program will be based upon um, developing freshmen. Brian, uh, two questions. Uh, you said earlier this year you do whatever they want to do in terms of uh, pregame routine, but LSU saying that you're, that's going to stay the same. Or does that please you? And also uh, the SEC announcing that all school all schools are going to have to do in the football, basketball, baseball are going to have to do the 
the uh, the player availability reports as you started doing last year. Does that yes. please you as well that it's going to be across the board? I do. Uniform? I mean, I think it's a smart idea. I think you know it, it just takes away um, you know this idea of you know we're we're trying to you know hold information and I, I think the more things that we can do across the board as a conference the better and when it comes to injuries uh, being transparent with that similar to what the NFL does I think is a good thing as you know we started doing that last week uh, last year and um, you know I, I'm, I voted for that obviously there was some uh, conversation about what the best way for us to announce it you know probable questionable out all of those things but I think we all agreed as coaches that coming out with some kind of statements during the week was was a good idea as it relates to um, the uh, the routines um, you know look I, I can make a routine work anyway um, you know, my job is to pre prepare our football team and get them ready to play. Um, you know, I've been a Division II head football coach where I've had to, prior to a game, shovel the field. Um, so, look, I, th this is, um, I'll do whatever they tell me to do, right? I mean, these decisions are made above my head and um, I'll get our team ready to play and. Tell me what time to get them out on the field, and I'll be ready to go. Uh, yeah, Coach. I mean, you guys have not been scared to play true freshmen in their first games. Um, if, just curious, over the last couple of weeks of preparation, have there been any that have stood out to you that you know could see the field this Sunday, and just kind of who, who might those guys be? Freshmen that could or will see the field. Um, you know, I think on the – the offensive side of the ball, I mean, th there's there's less, you know, there's less likely of that kind of scenario happening. Uh, I think defensively you could see a couple of freshmen get on the field. Um, you know, I think Ahmad Bro is probably the one guy that could see the most action. He's the most ready physically and mentally uh, to play for us. Um, you know, P.J. Woodland is another freshman that, you know, is likely to, to see some playing time. Now, that doesn't include some freshmen that make cameo appearances on special teams. But if you're talking about, you know, um, you know defensive snaps or offensive snaps, um, you know, those two guys in particular, I think, have a real chance. Um, I think at the safety position, Deshaun Spears has a chance to see some action as well. So those probably are the guys that, that jump out at me. Brian, over here. Yeah. Uh, I think most would agree that the LSU fan base doesn't really need uh, any assistance in getting up for a football game in Tiger Stadium. But what are, what are you as the football coach and what are, what's the football program anticipating from – the new lights and video boards, graphics, all, you know, the new bells and whistles over there just to improve the, the in-game experience, not only for the fans, maybe for the, for the team as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it impacts the team as much as it impacts the fan experience. The fan experience will be heightened. Um, you know, I remember when I was at Notre Dame, you know, we had wooden bleachers and we had no jumbotron. And... What we found was that, you know, the, the history and tradition is one thing, but when everybody's looking on their phone for information and not paying attention to the game, it takes away from the game experience itself. But now when you look up on a massive board and it's got all the information, it's got all the bells and whistles, and you've got ribbon boards that are always constantly feeding you information, um, it, it definitely helps for the game experience. And, um, you know, I, I think the, the lights add to what, you know, is, 
you know, increasingly becoming much more of, a, of an event, if you will, uh, in, in Tiger Stadium. And I think that that's an enhancement as well as the speaker system. So all that together, I think, you know, our players are going to enjoy just being in Tiger Stadium. Um, and and it, it certainly is, is going to catch them, but they get so focused in on what's in front of them. But I think for the fans, it's, it's going to be uh, a heightened experience. Hey, Coach. Uh, you mentioned on Monday that a lot of your guys on the team have battle scars from the last couple of openers. I just wanted to know, uh, is there a certain kind of different mindset that they have going into this game against USC, a special kind of hunger, wanting to win, or do you guys just treat it kind of like every other game? I mean, look, it's it's pretty, uh, you know, I think you have to always keep in mind that there's a number of players on this team that have experienced, you know, two openers where they weren't successful, including myself. So, you know, there's a resolve there that, you know, you, you want to be prepared in any way to – to see that you come out victorious. And so their preparation has been outstanding. They've prepared. Now they know they've got to perform. Um, so they're going to handle what they can handle. But I think they're going to draw on experiences. And, and, and that's what I meant by battle scars. Battle scars are really about, you know, the things that you can pull on that are going to be helpful for you um, and, and allowing you to be your best when your best is needed. And, and I think that that's what we'll see with a lot of our guys that have played in these games. They're going to draw on past experiences that are going to help them be successful.